Hi, my name is Deidre Demons, and I'm so happy for you to join me today on a class inspired by Carter G. Woodson. So we can jump right into this class. Let's start in a child's pose. So you can take, if you're sitting up on props, you can take that to the side, and we'll take child's pose with the knees wide and the big toes together. So see here, once I set myself up that way, I can sit my thighs down to my heels. As the thighs go down, go ahead and walk your hands forward and you can walk the hands and the arms forward to lengthen and extend the sides of the trunk. And with that full length in the sides, let the head and neck come down. See here, can you move in two directions? So the thighs and legs go down as we reach and extend the fingers and the arms forward to bring length in the side. So the two ends pull away from one another. See, can you could keep that alertness to the outer body while you relax your head and your neck? Soften and relax the muscles on your face. And then keeping this distance between the hands and the feet, inhale and lift up onto all fours. With this distance between the hands and feet, we'll tuck the toes under. Your feet can be hips distance or as wide as the sticky mat. That'll give you a little more space. With the toes tucked, raise your legs up for Adhukha Swanasana, Downward Facing Dog Pose. So here, lift your heels to lift the ankles, the shins, the knees, and the thighs. Raise the hips up to the ceiling. So we want to first give ourselves freedom. So yes, the classic pose is that the heels come down, but if I push the heels down too soon, and then even try to push my back towards my leg, that gets me stuck. So first thing, give ourselves space to extend the spine by lifting the heels and stretching the legs up to the height of the hips. That just sets us up to be able to bring that length and extension through the sides of the trunk. From there, exhale, release and come down. We'll rest in child's pose again. See here, even though this is about going forward, we have to go back first. And the back direction is how the thighs ground down. As the thighs ground down, we then can reach the arms forward to bring that length and extension to the spine. But if we forget to go back, everything kind of spills and sinks into the lumbar, maybe the shoulder joint. So see, can you root the thighs down to the heels as you stretch the arms forward. And then again, with that distance between the hands and the feet, we'll lift up onto all fours again. Tuck the toes under and raise the legs up for Adhukha Svanasana. So remember, first we create space. We find the freedom to extend the sides by lifting the heels to lift the legs and to raise the hips up. Now, with that height in the hips, we can press the hands to stretch the arms. So see here how I'm stretching my arms and there's this full lift from the wrist all the way up to the hip. Keeping that stretch in the arms and the sides now, press your thighs and your knees back. So the fronts of the legs move to the backs of the legs and see how it's the legs going back that helps us ground the heels down. With that all organized, you can rest your head and your neck. And then bend your knees. We'll walk forward towards the front of the mat. You can take your hands to your hips, press your feet, and come all the way up. So here, we can stand in the center of the mat in Tadasana, mountain pose. And we'll take Tadasana first with the hands on the hips like this. So with your hands on your hips, shift your weight back into your heels. And then with the weight in your heels, lift your toes. Tighten your knees and the thighs as you lift your toes. And then with that firmness in the legs there, press your heels down. As the heels go down, now the thighs can pull up to the hips. So before we go up, we have to go down. Before we move forward, we have to go back. So here we're finding that down and up action. As you press the heels and pull the thighs up to the hips, inhale, raise the sides. So the sides of the trunk lifting from the hips all the way to the arm of your chest. And then keep that length in the sides as you take the outer corners of the shoulders back. As the outer shoulders go back, see there how the sides of the chest move forward. Balance the head and neck straight. With your next inhalation, press your feet, lift the chest, spread and extend your fingers. Here you can turn your palms out. Press your feet and lift your arms in line with the shoulders. From here, look over at your right hand. You can bring that hand in line with the shoulder. 
spread your fingers wide here. And as you press into that heel, reach your right fingertips up to the side. So see here how we can spread and extend the fingers and straighten the elbow. Spread and extend the fingers and get even the center of the chest to move in that direction. Now keep that as you look over at your left hand. Bring that hand in line with the shoulder. Spread your fingers wide here. And as you press that left heel down, reach your fingertips out to the side. Spread and extend the fingers, extend the wrist. Spread and extend the fingers, straighten the elbow. Feel how we stretch the arms this way and create this length and extension across the chest. Now come back to center. With your next inhalation, press your feet, lift your arms up and over your head. We go down and up again here. So as you press your heels down, can you lift your fingers and your arms to the ceiling? So see again, the two ends moving away from one another, heel down, arm up, brings all this light, this freedom, this extension, this lightness to the sides of the trunk. From here, exhale, take the arms out and down. You can interlock your fingers in front of you like this. Turn your palms forward. As you press the palms forward, take the legs back. Lift your toes, press the feet, and swing the arms up. As you stamp your heels down, lift your hands, lift your arms, use that stretch in the arms to fully extend the sides. And then exhale, release, turn the palms to face you. Change the interlock of the fingers so the opposite index fingers on top. Here you can take the palms forward, legs back, lift the toes again to firm the legs, and then with that firmness, press the heels, swing the arms up and over your head. Can you go down and up again? Press down with the heels. Lift your hands, lift your arms to fully extend the sides. And then exhale and release. Next, we'll take the fingers behind the back, interlock your fingers behind your back like this. See how we can have the heels and the hands apart. That will give us a little space to open the chest. Shift your weight back into your heels again. Lift your toes to firm the legs. And then with that firmness there, press the heels down. Inhale, raise the sides up, keeping that lift in the sides. Take the outer corners of your shoulders back. So we have thighs back, outer shoulders back. See here, can you press your heels down into the mat? Stretch your arms back and down and lift your chest away from the stretching the arms. So here we bring not only this length to the sides from the down and up, heel down, chest up, but adding this position of the arms, we start to work to bring the upper back in. So we bring that mobility to the upper back that allows us to open across the chest. Exhale, relax a little, change the interlock of the fingers. With that new interlock, thighs can go back. Lift your toes firm on the legs. As you press your heels, inhale and raise the sides up. Keeping that stretch in the arms, our shoulders can roll back. And now open the chest again by pressing the heels. Stretch your arms back and down as you lift the chest away from the stretch of the arms. That's it, and then exhale, release. We'll come back to Urdhva Hastasana and see after that shoulder work, maybe we have more space, more freedom to lift the sides and open the chest. So stand into Asana with your hands to your hips again. Shift your weight to your heels, and then lift your toes. Press the feet, raise the sides up. Roll the shoulders back, and here stretch your arms by your sides. Turn your arms out again. As you inhale, press the heels, swing the arms up and over your head. Spread your fingers well. As you spread your fingers, stamp your heels down. Lift your fingers, lift your arms. Use that stretch in the arms to fully extend the sides. That's it. Press your feet, lift the chest as you reach the arms higher and higher up. And then exhale, arms can come out and down. Roll your shoulders back. And then we cover with an open chest here. We'll move into our standing pose practice and we'll work today with the lateral standing poses. These poses help to create freedom in the hip joint, but also help to stabilize the hip joint. Today, we will work with how to bring that freedom and mobility to the hip joint. And so when we come into these poses, the, the lateral standing poses like triangle pose, warrior two, side angle pose, the front leg turns up. So you can see here how my toes point straight ahead. But look closely here at the center of my thigh, the center of my knee, the center of my shin kind of falls more towards the big toe side of the foot. So what we'll work with today to bring that mobility in the hip, we turn not only the ankle, not only the knee, but way up here at the top of the thigh. I might bend my leg a little, not, not a deep bend, because if I bend my leg a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, I just end 
end up wagging the knee and I don't connect to the hip. So here is the, that slight bend in the leg. It's almost like I'm not even bending my, my knee. But with that slight bend in the leg, I'm able to release that turning in the top of the thigh, I'm able to release to create that freedom and space in the hip joint. Now with that turning, the center thigh, knee, shin, and ankle all in one line. So to come into this pose, watch first, the back toes will turn in slightly, the whole front leg we can turn out and then we can look. The toes point straight ahead, but not so much that center leg. So we can bend the front leg just a little, and then looking at the leg, we turn, 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 turn releasing that hip away from the waist until we see the center leg is in the line. Then we can press the feet, stretch the legs, and come into the pose. So let's do that together. Petita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. So you can stand in the center of your mat, raise your hands to your chest. When you're ready, bend your legs, step or jump the feet apart. You can go a little wider with your feet, take your thighs back, lift your toes. As you press your heels, lift the chest and extend out through the fingertips. That's it. Then here, turn your left toes in slightly, turn the whole right leg up. Look at your right leg. So you can see the toes probably are right in line with the front edge of the mat there. But look closely at the center thigh, center knee, and shin. You can bend that right leg a little, not so much that we just end up moving the knee, but we want to connect to the hip. So we bend the leg a little just to create space. Now, looking at your leg, can you turn, 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 turn the top of the thigh until you're seeing the center of your right thigh, center knee, center shin, and ankle are all in one line. Once you have that alignment, press your feet, lift the chest, and then exhale and bend to the side. Take your right hand to your shin, Left hand to your hip. Exhale, settle a little. Lift your toes to tighten your knees and the thighs. With that firmness there, can you press your heels and pull the thighs up to the hips? Keeping that stretch in the legs, press the right hand into the right leg, roll the left shoulder back to open up the left side of the chest. With that stretch in the legs and lifting the chest, now take the top arm up. Press your feet, tighten the knees, stretch the arms to spread and open across the chest. To come out of this pose, press your left foot, stretch your arm, and pull yourself up. And you can turn your toes forward, take your hands to your hips again. Roll your shoulders back and recover with an open chest. Deeper breaths, deeper inhalation, and more complete exhalation. Let's take the arms wide again. Turn your right toes in, left leg out. Look at your left leg, the toes we can see point straight ahead, but what about the rest of the leg? So you can bend that knee a little, so now we can get the turning all the way at the top of the thigh. So turn, 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 turn that top thigh until you're looking at your leg and can see the center thigh, knee, shin, and ankle are all in one line. And then with that rotation, press your feet, lift the chest, and with an exhalation, bend to the side. Left hand comes to your shin, right hand onto your hip. Exhale, settle a little here. Lift your toes to firm the knees and the thighs. With that firmness there, press the heels down. And as you press your heels, can you pull your thighs up into the hips? Roll the top shoulder back in here. Now stretch that top arm up. Press your feet, stretch the legs, stretch the arms to spread it open across the chest. That's it. To come up, press your right foot, stretch your arm, pull yourself up. Turn your toes forward. Step or jump the feet together. Roll your shoulders back and recover with the open chest. We'll take Uchicha Tree Kanasana again, so working again to create that freedom and space in the hip joint. When you're ready, raise your hands to the center of your chest. Inhale, go wide apart. With the legs wide, turn your left toes in. Right leg turns out. Remember, we, we're looking to see where we're going, so the toes, the right toes point straight ahead, but what about the rest of the leg? You can bend the knee a little, turn that leg so you see the whole center leg in the line. And then once we have that alignment, press your feet, lift the chest, exhale, and bend. Take your right hand onto your shin, left hand to your hip. Exhale, settle a little here. Lift your toes, tighten the knees and the thighs. Press the heels, pull the thighs up to the hips. With that stretch in the legs, roll the top shoulder back and then stretch that top arm straight up. Press your feet, 
Pull the legs up, stretch the arms to open across the chest. That's it, to come up, press your back foot, stretch your arm, pull yourself up. Turn your toes forward, and then hands can come to the hips. Roll the shoulders back, and recover with an open chest. Deeper breaths, deeper inhalation, and more complete exhalation. That's it, take the arms wide. With the arms wide, turn your right toes in, left leg out. Rotate the left leg from inside to out. Remember how we can bend the knee to give ourselves space? We can look and see that as we're turning the leg, we see when we get that alignment. Set your thigh, knee, shin, ankle, all in one line. With that rotation, press your feet, lift the chest. Exhale, bend to the side. Left hand comes to your shin, right hand to your hip. Exhale, settle a little. That's it, and as you settle, lift your toes, firm the legs. Press your heels and pull the thighs up to the hips. Keeping that stretch in the legs, roll the top shoulder back and then stretch that top arm up. Press your feet, stretch the legs, stretch the arms to open across your chest. That's it, to come up, press your back foot, stretch your arm, pull yourself up. Turn your toes forward, step or jump, the feet together. Now for our next pose, warrior pose two, we're, we're adding something. So the turning of the leg is the same. We're looking to get that rotation where the whole center leg's in the line. So how we turn the leg is the same. The new thing happening here is that the front leg bends. The front leg in these poses bends eventually into a right angle. Right angle where the shin is perpendicular to the floor, the thigh is parallel. So one of the, the biggest things that keeps us from getting that right angle, and, and the right angle, when we get that deeper bend in the front leg, we get more of a stretch to the inner thigh here. We create more space across the pelvis. What keeps us usually from getting that is not having enough space. So here, when we get that turning in the front leg, and then we bend, I'm gonna look and see my shin is perpendicular to the floor, but the thigh not so uh, parallel. So I'm straighten the leg, give myself space by walking that back foot back a little. Now that I have a little wider distance between the feet, I can re-bend my leg and I get into that deeper stretch to the inner thigh. I create more space across the pelvis. So we'll do that together, going back to how we rotate the leg to create freedom and space in the hip joint. Now bending the leg to create that freedom and space in the hip, the knee, and the ankle. Let's do that together. Raise your hands to the center of your chest. Bend your legs, inhale, go wide apart. With the legs wide, turn your left toes in slightly. Turn the whole right leg out. So you can look again, see where you're going, turn that front leg from inside to out. And once you have that alignment again, where the center leg is in the line, press your feet, lift the chest. Keep that lift as you bend your right leg. Ankle bends, knee bends, we release in the hip for the thigh to go down. Now, look at your front leg. Is the shin perpendicular to the floor? Is the thigh parallel? If that front thigh is not parallel, straighten your front leg a little. Take a little bit of a wider stance by walking that left foot back a bit. Now that we have more space, inhale, lift the chest. Keep that lift in the sides of the chest as you bend your front leg. Ankle bends, knee bends, release in the hips so the thigh goes down. That's it. And then inhale, come on up. Turn your toes forward, hands to your hips. Roll your shoulders back and recover with an open chest. Deeper breaths here, deeper inhalation and more complete exhalation. Let's do second side, arms wide. Turn your right toes in, left leg out. Look at the left leg, turn that leg from inside to out. Keeping that rotation in the front leg, inhale into the top chest. Exhale and bend, bend the ankle. Bend the knee, can you release in the hips of the thigh goes down? And then look at the left leg again. Is the shin perpendicular to the floor? Is the thigh parallel? If that front thigh is not quite parallel, straighten the left leg a little. Walk the right foot back. So we give ourselves that little bit of space so that now when we re-bend the front leg, ankle bends, knee bends, we release in the hip for the thigh to go down. Now we're getting the right ankle but not only creating the shape, but getting, giving ourselves that space in the other thigh, that space across the pelvis. Inhale, come on up. Turn the toes forward. Step or jump the feet together. Roll your shoulders back and recover with an open chest. Deeper breaths here, deeper inhalation and more 
complete exclamation. Let's try that again. Warrior pose two. How we turn the leg to create freedom. How we bend the leg a little deeper to create even more space there. When you're ready, inhale, go wide apart. With the legs wide, turn your left toes in and the right leg up. Turn the front leg. You can look and see, bend the leg, look and see that you're getting that rotation. With the front of the leg in the line, inhale into the top chest. Exhale to bend. Bend the ankle, bend the knee, releasing the hip and see if the thigh parallel. If that thigh isn't parallel, straighten the leg, walk the back foot a little to the left. Keeping that space now, exhale, bend again. Ankle bends, knee bends. Can you release in the hip so the thigh goes down? Inhale to the top chest, exhale sit a little bit lower there. That's it, feel that work and stretch across the inner thighs, that space across the pelvis. Inhale, come on up. Turn your toes forward, hands to your hips. Roll the shoulders back and recover with an open chest. Deeper breaths, deeper inhalation and more complete exhalation. Second side, arms wide. Turn your right toes in, left leg out. You can bend that leg, turn the top thigh, see the center leg in the line. With that alignment, press your feet, lift the chest. Keep that lift as you bend your left leg. Ankle bends, knee bends, releasing the hip. And then look again, is the shin perpendicular to the floor? Is the thigh parallel? If that front thigh is not parallel, straighten the leg a little. Walk your right foot to the right. With that extra bit of space, lift the chest. Exhale and bend. Ankle bends, knee bends, release and the hips of the thigh goes down. So we're getting the shape, but also finding the benefits of that shape. That's it. Inhale, come on up. Turn your toes forward. Step or jump the feet together. Roll the shoulders back. And we cover with an open chest. Deeper breaths, deeper inhalation. And more complete exhalation. Our next pose now brings the two previous poses from triangle pose, where your two brings all that together. So this pose will take a grip to the back of the mat. We turn the front leg the same. We bend the front leg the same as warrior two. We bend to the side. This is the new thing happening here. The top arm now comes over our ear and I create this long line of extension, this extended side angle by how I press my back foot down and I reach my top arm away from that. Let's do that together. So you can take your grip on the right side of your sticky mat. When you're ready, inhale, go wide apart. With the legs wide, left toes in, right leg up. So we're, going, we're reviewing here. Turn the front leg from inside to out. See that that center leg is in the line. Once you have that alignment, exhale, bend the front leg into a right angle. Exhale, bend to the side. Bring your grip right against your outer ankle. Left hand can come to your hip. Press the right hand down. Rebend that right leg, and with that deeper bend, roll the left shoulder back. Stretch the left arm out. Rotate the palm with the whole arm so we open the chest a bit more there. And then with that, swing the left arm over your ear. Press the left foot, reach that left arm away from the back foot, pressing down. Lengthen that whole side. That's it to come up, press your back foot, stretch your arm, pull yourself up. Turn your toes forward. Step or jump the feet together. That's it. Recover with the open chest. Let's take the break to the other side. We'll take side angle pose going to the left now. When you're ready, inhale, go wide apart. With the legs wide, turn the right toes in, left leg out. Rotate the left leg from inside to out. Press your feet, lift the chest. That's it, exhale and bend. Exhale, bend again. Left hand can come to your grip, right hand to your hip. Press the left hand, stretch the arm. Sometimes we hold here in the hip. So keeping the stretch in that left arm, exhale, release in the hips so the thigh goes more down. Now with that bend, roll the top shoulder back, stretch the top arm up. Turn the palm, but the whole arm rotates. That's it, and now swing that right arm over your ear. Press the right foot down and reach that right arm away from the back foot press. That's it, to come up, press your right foot, stretch your arm, pull yourself up. Turn your toes forward, step or jump the feet together. Roll the shoulders back and recover with an open chest. 
deeper breaths. We'll go on to the second side. So you can take your break to the right again. When you're ready, inhale, go wide apart. With the legs wide, left toes turn in. Turn the whole right leg out. Look at your leg. See that as you're turning the leg, the center leg lines up. With that alignment, inhale, lift the chest. Exhale and bend. Keep that bit in the front leg as you bend again to the side. Right hand to your brick, left hand to your hip. Rebend the front leg. Roll the left shoulder back. Stretch the left arm out. And turn that whole arm out so you open more across the chest. Now with that opening, swing the left arm over your ear. Press the left foot and reach the left arm away from the back foot pressing down so that whole left side gets longer. That's it. To come up, press your left foot, stretch your arm, pull yourself up. Turn the toes forward. Step or jump the feet together. Roll the shoulders back and recover with an open chest. Second side, we'll take the brick now to the left once again. With the brick now on the other side, inhale, go wide apart. With the legs wide, turn your right toes in slightly. The whole left leg can turn out. Rotate that left leg from inside to out. Inhale into the top chest. Exhale, bend. Exhale, bend again. Left hand to your brick, right hand to your hip. Press the left hand, re-bend that left leg. That's it. Now take the right arm out. Turn the right arm to open across the chest. From here, swing the right arm over your ear. Press the right foot and reach that top arm away from the back foot pressing. That's it. To come up, press your back foot, stretch your arm, pull yourself up. Turn your toes forward. Step and jump the feet together. Let's take the brick to the front now and we'll use it just in case. Here, step your feet apart. With the legs wide, take your thighs back, lift your toes, and as you press your feet, raise the sides, roll the shoulders back, lift and open the chest. You can look up here. And as you look up, press your feet, lift the chest higher. And now with that length and extension in the spine, exhale, go forward. You can take your hands to the floor first. Press your feet, stretch the legs. Press your hands, stretch the arms. Now take the thighs back and pull the chest forward. We'll take the head down. If the head can come to the floor, then you can take Prasarna Palutanasana Classic with the head down. If the head doesn't quite make it to the floor, we have our brick. So you can take your brick on whatever height that you need. The crown of the head is supporting you. Press your feet, pull the thighs up to the hips, and then with that stretch of the arms, press your hands, or with that stretch of the legs, press your hands and lift the shoulders away from the ears. That's it. To come up here, we'll press the hands and stretch the arms. Walk the legs in. And we can take the hands to the hips, press the feet and come all the way up. Roll the shoulders back and recover with an open chest. We'll take now shoulder balance. For shoulder balance, if you have three blankets, you can set up your three blankets. I'm gonna take the folded side of my blanket and put it to the edge of my sticky mat like this. We'll set up all three blankets like that. If you just have one blanket, you can use the one. If you have two blankets, you can use the two. And of course, if you have three, then stack all your blankets this way. Once you have the blanket stacked, we'll take the back of the mat and fold it over so the top of the sticky mat is about an inch away from the top of the blankets. With that set up, we can take a bolster, a pillow, even a brick to support. So for this pose, we start sitting on the bolster or the brick, whatever you have to support there. When I lie back, my shoulders are about an inch away from the top of the blanket. So I can take my thumb and my index finger like this to measure about an inch. With that set up now, I'll press my hands down, swing my legs over and take my toes to the floor. Of course, if the toes don't come to the floor, you can take your toes up on a chair a couch even. So if I had my legs a little higher, then, then I can press my toes down and lift my thighs up. If the toes come to the floor, you can press your toes down and lift the thighs to bring that length and extension through the spine. 
Now I can walk my hands towards my shoulder blades and lift my back ribs up. With that lift to the back rib, I'll walk the elbows in, my hands holding my back. I'll swing now, one leg up at a time. In this pose, gravity tends to work on us. We were working earlier by pressing the heels and lifting the arms up to lengthen the sides. Now my hands, as my hands walk towards my shoulder blades to lift my back ribs, I have to now press my upper arms down to the support, spread my toes and pull the legs straight up. So the down up action to bring that freedom and extension through the spine here comes from the arms pressing and the legs lifting. With that all organized, head and neck can be quiet. Soften and relax the muscles on your face. Feel the gravity starts to work on us and we sink a little. Can you relift yourself by walking your hands down? Lift the back ribs, upper arms pressing, and we reach up through the legs. With the arms and the legs working intensely, head and neck quiet, soften and relax the muscles on your face. We'll take just a few more breaths here. That's it. When you're ready, we'll take one leg down, the other leg down. You can reach back from your bolster and slowly roll yourself on down. You can slide towards your head so that your shoulder blades come to the floor first. With the shoulder blades down, head and neck on the floor. The blankets give us this nice lift to the upper back that helps us open across the chest. You can rest here. Taking deeper breaths to open the chest, taking deeper breaths to expand the ribs upwards and outwards. Then from here, we can keep sliding off the support and roll to the side to come up. We'll take Shavasana. For Shavasana, you can open your support, your, your sticky mat. Feel free to take a blanket for your head if that feels good. You also may just take a blanket for your knee. So with the knee supported, the, the lower back can release you. When you're ready, go ahead and lie back. With the leg supported, you can still tuck the shoulders down and in and let the head and neck rest. Let yourself settle here. Relax the legs, relax the arms, relax and release your head and your neck. Soften and relax the muscles on your face with each exhalation. Let your whole body settle, release, and let go here. With the work of the asana complete, the work of the standing poses, those are the foundations for our method. How we learn to stretch the arms and the legs, how we learn to lift the sides and open the chest and the standing poses, that supports us in every other group of poses. It supports us in the back bends, the forward bends, the inversions. It supports us in the arm balances and the twists. It even supports us in our life outside the mat, outside the yoga room. It teaches us correct posture so that we can stand in a way that's not putting really stress or strain in our back, in our knees, in our shoulders and neck. Now with that part of the practice over, let all of that work settle into your body. So the body begins to remember that alignment. The body begins to remember that structure. Let yourself rest so all that work records itself into your muscles and bones. Relax and release your head and your neck. Soften and relax the muscles on your face. Let your brain release back, down, and in. Take a few more breaths. 
frontier. When you're ready, gently place your hands on your abdomen. You can hug your legs into your chest. Roll to one side, pause just a moment on your side. And then keeping your head and your neck quiet, press your hands down and lift yourself up. You can make your way to a tall seat here. With the legs crossed, join your hands together at the center of your heart. Sit up tall. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today in a class inspired by Carter G. Woodson, who is considered the godfather of Black history. And so today's class, we work with the all of the postures are historical, but the standing poses are, again, the foundations. They teach us all of the actions and the arms and the legs that support us everywhere that we go. Thank you so much.